Good morning. All right, there we go. All right, so let me pull up my screen again. Okay. One moment, please. Okay, so moving back to my agenda, we are covering the introductions, of course, which we just did. I really want to show our website and some resources that you can refer to to learn more. Levels of involvement for orienting with this working group program, deliverables that you can expect to be a part of, and meeting expectations for the working group, as well as the operations and the way in which we do things. So if you have any questions along the way, please, by all means, feel free to raise your hand. Um, Nicole and Elizabeth, if you could monitor the chat, since I'm sharing my screen, it's hard for me to see, but we can definitely make this an interactive session. So uh, feel free to ask questions as we go. And also- can you, um, Kirsten, can you mute Jack? Yes. And if we could all remain on mute, unless you are trying to speak, that would be really helpful. Okay. I don't see him. Who was it, Nicole? He covered it. I took care of it. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So moving right along, like I said, I want to share our website with you guys because sometimes people don't know where they can find things and I want to make it super clear. So on our ATARC website, which is just ATARC.org, you'll see a number of different tabs at the top. So if you're part of our working group, the ones that you really need to concern yourself are going to be our mission areas and our events and our resources. So I'm going to start with our mission areas first. This is going to give you an overview of the program itself and the different what we call mission areas. There are five of them that we cover in our program. So I'm going to scroll down here. You'll see that we have AI and data, cloud and infrastructure, DevOps, digital transformation, and cybersecurity. When you click on either of these buttons, it'll take you to that mission areas homepage. And from there, you'll get to see the different people that are actively involved in our working group from a leadership perspective. So for instance, I'll go over to the AI and data page. Now you'll see that we have our leadership team posted here. I'm not sure if any of these folks are on the call. If they are, please speak up. But this is our overall leadership team for the mission area. And I'm going to get into levels of involvement later in my presentation, but I just want to give you guys a lay of the land in terms of where you can find information. So this is our AI and data leadership team. You'll then scroll down and you'll see our different working group activities listed under there. So there can be a number of different working groups happening under one mission area at a time. For instance, under AI and data, we have data op interoperability and AI and data policy. So we've got two active working groups that you could potentially participate in from the AI and data perspective. Now, maybe AI and data is not something that you're as interested in. Well, you can also go back and look at what we might have under our cloud and infrastructure mission area. So again, you'll scroll down, you'll see who our leadership team is. We've got a number of different government and industry co-chairs, and then you'll see another activity around the working group that we have, which is a cloud and coffee series, and then our working groups. And I believe right now we have one active cloud working group, which is the multi-cloud working group. So you can find that there. If you have any specific questions about these working groups, you can always refer to Elizabeth who introduced herself at the beginning and set up a meeting with her to really discuss what it is that this working group is doing, where they're at in their process and how and when you can become an active participant. Do we have any questions about any of this so far? I do want to add, um, just before you move on, I was going to put it in the chat, but most of the groups do have charters available. So when you click on an individual group that you're interested in, um, let's just use policy as an example, then you can go to their page and you'll see kind of past things that they've 
published before and also the charter so you can kind of get an idea before you reach out to Liz on what is going on in the team. Yep. So thank you, Nicole. Again, DevOps, this is our DevOps mission area with the leadership team. Working groups under that includes the software factory, application development and operations. So to Nicole's point, if you want to review the description and then go to a little bit more information around that specific working group, you'll find a download charter button. And then this is what Nicole was talking about. She used a different working group as an example, but I'm just going to use this one. You can read all about the different activities and the way in which they conducted their working group. And if you still have questions after this, which is totally normal if you do, at that point, that's when you could reach out to Elizabeth and have a one-on-one -on -one session with her to talk about the best ways to engage with that specific group if you're interested. Any questions for me about any of this so far? Okay. Can you repeat, can you repeat well, Elizabeth's last name? Yeah, go ahead, Elizabeth. <laughs> Wyckoff. I'll put it in the, the chat for you as well. Okay. I'm just going to click on all of them so that you can see just a glimpse. Digital transformation. We've got a great leadership team here. And again, under that leadership team, we've got our different working groups in that mission area. And in this mission area of digital transformation, we've got workforce transformation and better procurement. And then finally, under our cybersecurity mission area, you will again see the leadership team up on the homepage, followed by the working groups where you could become actively involved, such as Zero Trust and Mobile Security and Global, we have a lot in this one, Global Quantum, Identity Management, and State and Local Cyber Grants, Supply Chain Management, Cyber collaboration, wow, keeps going, okay. And cybersecurity, higher education. So there's a lot of different working groups under this particular pillar, and they're all in different phases of the working group process. So some have been established for a long time. Some of them might just be spinning up, and that's why there's maybe not as much information or not as many people involved. So those would be the kinds of conversations that you can go to Elizabeth about if something such as cybersecurity, higher education really piques your interest and you want to know, hey, how can I get more involved? That would be at that point, you would have that conversation with Elizabeth and she would loop you into all the correct individuals. Um, I, I, this is Jim Payne. I have a question, Elizabeth. Do each of the working groups have regular, the, these, the leadership of the working group, do they have um, regular meetings, monthly, quarterly? Yes, um, absolutely. And um, Kirsten actually does have a, a slide on that. So um, yeah, okay. We'll get into the, the cadence in, in just a second. All right, thank you. Yeah, great question. Yep, we're going to get into all those logistics in a moment. Um, any other questions before I move on? Okay, I need to stop share real quick because I can't figure out how to open up my PowerPoint. All right. All right, here we go. So navigating the website, um, I was gonna say we just covered that, but I also forgot a couple of things. All right, so the other things to concern yourself with if you're involved in our working groups is you may say, well, where does all of this awesome output go? Like, how am I supposed to see all these deliverables that you keep speaking of? That would be under the resources tab. So. You go to the resources tab, you'll find our ATARC YouTube channel, which you can go and find past recorded videos. And I'll show you another way to find those as well. But you'll also see all of our really fantastic publications here. And they're all tagged for the different mission areas that they came from. So if you're looking for a DevOps publication, let's say, well, click on DevOps down here under resources, and you will find a number of different white papers, such as the 
DevOps Metrics Performance Playbook, which was a publication out of our DevOps Working Group and the DevOps Working Group Code Repository and so on and so forth. So you'll see just a ton of different resources. Maybe you're interested in reading some of them. Maybe you know someone who might be interested in reading some of them. You can always refer back to there and that's where they are posted and hosted. And the other thing on our website that you will find interesting is if you go to the events tab, you can click on virtual events is one option. This will take you again to those recorded videos that have been outputs from the working groups, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but that is where you will find the ATARC video channel past virtual events. You'll see we did a supply chain risk management roundtable that was recorded and just a variety of different working group related activities. Some of them are not necessarily from the working group. Some of them were sponsored. Like you'll see, we did one with Veeam and Pure Storage, but others um, you'll, you'll find here and our, and our summits are posted here too. So if there's ever a time when you miss an event, you can always reference back to this page. And if you click on the events tab and not, not the drop down, but just the tab itself, you'll find all of our upcoming events, such as the one that we're on right now, the working group orientation. So this will give you a list of all of our webinars. Again, some of them are related to our working groups, are created by our working groups, are promoted from our working groups. And then some of them are not necessarily part of the program, but because they are very much related, we, we post them on this page here. So Zero Trust Lab presentation is another great example. This is where you can find the page to register to attend these types of events. Does anyone have any questions for me so far about that? Okay, Nicole, Elizabeth, how am I doing? Are we, am I forgetting anything? No, you're doing good so far. <laughs> okay. Covering everything. Um, are we monitoring the chat? Does anyone have yep. anything we need to? We're good there. Yep. All right. Thank you, guys. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So now we're going to talk about levels of involvement. So like I just showed you on the mission area page, we have different levels of involvement. So we have our mission area leadership, which is made up of at least one government chair, one government vice chair, one industry chair, and one industry vice chair. Sometimes we have more if people want to co-chair a project, totally fine. But these are the different positions that we need to have filled in order to have a successful mission area established. So if this is the type of exposure and interaction that you want to have, then you would reach out to Elizabeth if you're with government or Colin if you're with industry, and we would talk about getting you involved from a leadership perspective. Same goes for those working groups that are underneath the mission area itself. We have government and government vice chairs. We have industry chairs and industry vice chairs all working together to establish a working group initiative. And then we also have working group membership levels. So this can be anyone from government, industry, academia, or if you're a consultant and you wanna act as sort of an advisory person for the working group, that's another way that you can get involved from the working group member level. So all of these different levels are ways to engage that you would speak with, again, Colin about if you're from the industry side or Elizabeth, if you're pretty much anything else. So academia, government, or a consultant. Do I have any questions about that so far? Or if my my ATARC peeps want to fill in any gaps that I've missed? No, you're doing good. You could go over the labs a little bit there. Kirsten associated with the um, working groups, maybe. You want me to go over the labs? The tab, yeah, because they're associated with the working groups. Just kind of show them the labs. Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, so back to our working group or our um our website. 
So the labs that Bill was referencing are posted here. So you'll see we've got our derived FIDO credentials, our digital mobile credentials, and our Zero Trust Lab. So if you click on any one of these labs, you'll be able to discover more information about the folks that are involved in this project. You'll learn about the different use cases that we've acquired through this lab process and our industry, our environment sponsor and the environment itself. You can get a high level overview here as well as the participation process for the lab. So these labs are part of a working group membership. If you'd like to get involved in that way, then you would become a working group member. Colin or Bill, would you like to add anything to what I just shared? The labs are both physical and virtual. So we have a physical lab at Equinix and a virtual lab we have um, with Acuity. So each of the, we're starting to branch off into the lab area with each of these working groups and some of in some of the working groups. Yep. So you can always learn more about that there. Any questions? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm very glad you opened up that tab because I wasn't aware that existed. <clears throat> I'm, I'm on the Zero Trust uh, working group. This gives you a good summary of who and what they're doing. Um, uh, in the physical lab <clears throat> for Zero Trust, is there a, a, actually a space you go into for these demos? <clears throat> Most of the demos I've been watching are, seem to be virtual. Correct. Yeah, they're all they're all virtual. Yeah. All right. But is you, you speak of a, a physical lab and a virtual? Is there a physical Zero Trust lab? <clears throat> That is an option. Who from our team would like to respond to that question? Yeah, so we have um, physical space in the data center that we do have, but we haven't really been using that as much as the virtual just because it's been a little bit easier for people. It is an option though, if that's something that you're looking to do. And we can talk more about that offline because it's not as popular of a choice. Yeah, I just wonder what, what attendees be willing to drive out there to that. <laughs> yeah, that becomes the issue. Everyone's become very used to this ease of the Zoom and, and uh, Teams. All right, thank you. Yeah, of course. Good questions. Anyone else? Okay, so again, just to recap, you can join as a government chair, vice chair, or industry chair, vice chair from either the mission area, the working group, or as a member, and they're all very valuable parts that we need people to play. So our deliverables, James, I think this is a question that you had earlier. What exactly are these deliverables? Well, depending on what's outlined in the working group charter from the moment that it's established, they are working towards some sort of goal. And the way that they have that goal is they put it in either a white paper, a playbook, Sometimes we do roundtable discussions or webinar events. We also do podcasts or meetups. And like we just spoke about, we have labs as part of our deliverable outputs. And I always say, you know, think about the kind of deliverable that you would really want to get involved in from, from your perspective. Do you like researching? Do you like writing? Do you like proofreading? Well, if that's the case, then you may want to join a working group that's already doing some sort of white paper. Mm -hmm. Now, do you hate doing all those things? Do you like talking with people? Do you like networking? Do you like interacting? Do you like being a, a host? Well, then probably a working group that's putting out some sort of roundtable discussion on a monthly basis or a webinar or panel discussion or a podcast or even just hosting a meetup. I mean, I, I feel like we've gotten away from that since COVID, but that's something that we could definitely talk about doing again. So if you're that type of person, then um, you will likely want to join those types of working group discussions. Um, those are all, well, yeah. You, you need to join or you would, through you, coordinate to set up a meetup or to set up a roundtable discussion. Right, right. Sorry, I got distracted because I just realized that for some reason my Zoom account only is giving me 12 minutes left of this meeting, so I'll try to make it quicker. Um, but yeah, so the working groups that are already established, they're already doing these kinds of activities. Now, if you are someone who 
is like, I have an idea for a new working group and I want to do this thing. That's another conversation that we could have. You would have to play an active role, of course, in creating this working group that you have in mind. But again, because our working groups are always in flowing, they're, they're starting, they have an ending point at some point, although some have been around for years, some might only be around for a few months, that's really what's established in the charter. So if you are someone who's like, I want to do six podcast episodes around this topic, and I want to invite these speakers, then that'd be a conversation you have with Elizabeth. And it would be like, great, let's create an outline. Let's establish something in a charter. Let's put a, our pen to paper and start working on this project. So that is another thing that is the art of the possible when joining our specific working group program. Mm -hmm. Any other questions there for me? Okay. And meeting expectations. So truly the way to get the most out of your working group membership is to participate. The more you put in, the more you get out. It's really important to communicate with the people that are in your working group, whether you're a leader or not. We need you to be consistent. We need you to show up to these meetings. It's always best if you're able to be on camera because that's just the best way to interact with people and form those connections mm -hmm. and then contribute. You know, it's okay to poke your head in on a meeting, but if you decide you want to participate, definitely be someone who's able to put yourself out there and, you know, represent yourself and your organization and your agency so that you are making a significant contribution to this working group. From that, you're going to gain access to network connections, professional development, highlight yourself as a thought leader in this space, gain brand recognition for yourself and your company, and be a part of a really innovative, um, a really innovative deliverable for the federal government. And generally, these working groups meet about at least two, two, two times monthly. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Again, that's established in the charter based on what the leadership thought was going to be the most appropriate cadence for the type of deliverable they're trying to create. And generally, they're held on Zoom just because that's easiest. Everybody's from, some people are from different parts of the country, and we find that Zoom works the best for these types of interactions. Um, different groups also have different processes in terms of maybe they prefer to utilize group texting or huddle. That's another opportunity that we use for communication. Some people use Slack. So again, it varies depending on that specific group and what they've decided. But just know that if you do join a working group, we need you to show up. We need you to be consistent. We need you to communicate with everybody in the group and, and contribute to the deliverable. And that's how you're going to make the most out of your membership. Any questions so, uh, for me there? Yeah, this is Jim Payne. I, I am a member of the um, ZTA working group, but I did not know that they were meeting twice a month. Where are those dates? And uh, those This dates? is just in general. Most of the working groups meet twice a month. It's not necessarily the case for the zero trust one. So that's when understanding what the charter is, you know, going to the website, looking at the charter, okay. talking to the group leads, and also meeting with Elizabeth if you have specific questions around the group. Um, typically, we just say twice a month because that's been the norm for most of them, but it's not necessarily all, all the way across the board. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good question. Anyone else? Okay, um, so I hope that my meeting doesn't end. It says I've got eight minutes left. I didn't know I had a timer on my account. Um, I would love to hear from our members that are on if you guys have any, if you've participated in the past, what are, what are some of your experiences or insights or information that you, you could share for anybody who's on the call and how to make the most out of your working group membership with us? And that can come from the ATARC people too. Hey, well, this is Annette Mitchell with the Internal Revenue Service. Um, hello, everyone. The DevOps Federal Interagency Council Project Manager Lead. I am a part of these working groups. They are awesome. I just want to say ATARC is just wonderful. We love being a part of ATARC. 
We learn so much from each other. And all I will say, because Kirsten, I know you're limited for time, is that I think by us all conversating with each other, the government agencies slash the industries, it's just an awesome way for us to learn what's going on out there in our agency slash IT modernization space. So great job. Love you guys. And I'm going to mute myself because we're limited to time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Annette. Um, anyone else that would like to share anything? And I appreciate the compliments, Annette. But if anyone has any um, feedback that might be constructive for us, I'd love to hear from you too. Yeah, this is Jim from Secure G. Uh, I almost blew off this orientation thinking how, how substantive could it be? But now I realize it's, it's I'm only operating at like 10% or less of what could be through the Zero Trust Architecture Working Group. So I'm very, very, very appreciative. And Annette, I'm just myself getting, getting started in involvement, but I think this dialogue is incredibly useful from the vendor as well as from the government perspective. Uh, we're only, it's the only way we're going to make progress. And thank you for ATARC standing in the middle to be the kind of the traffic warden to keep all the, di the, the juices flowing in, in all the right directions. And Elizabeth, you'll be hearing from me. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. I'm glad that you found this useful. And we are going to start doing them more often. We've been talking about monthly, maybe quarterly. Um, mm -hmm. I'm almost thinking monthly just because even if it's just one new person, it, it would be worth it. So um, thank you for that feedback. Anyone else? Okay. Well, I have lost my, I can't even find my Zoom. You guys can still hear me, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. I don't know where my Zoom screen went. Okay. Um, well, thank you all so much for joining us today. And this was a recorded session, so we'll send it out. Basically, the bottom line is I just want to make sure that everyone knows that people at ATARC, we're very accessible. So please reach out anytime for us. If there's new ideas that you want to establish in our working group program, we're always looking for new innovative ways to interact across government and industry. And we want to make these things fun for everybody. We don't want it to be a whole lot of you know, work or something that you don't enjoy attending. So whatever we can do to improve the experience for you, please reach out and let us know. Um, and then on your end, I really um, encourage you to, you know, just get as involved as you can with with one or or maybe two groups. Don't stretch yourself too thin because then it's hard to contribute, you know, when you're doing five or six different things with ATARC. But pick one or two that you find you're really passionate about and you will find that um, you'll you'll have a lot more success in engaging with the team if you're able to be consistent in that way. Well, thank you again. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. Appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Thanks. Thank have you. Day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.